Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, episode number 267. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and today we have a treat for the BEB family. Now, before I tell you who's on today, I want to let you know that this is also in video. So if you go to YouTube, to my channel, Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, you can watch this video live. Today, family, we have Mr. E.T. himself, Eric Thomas. And he has so many different titles. He's a PhD, author, speaker, educator, pastor, and change maker. So today, family, we're going to chop it up with E.T. Um, we had a great time connecting, and I'm sure you're going to get all types of gems and jewels that E.T. drops during today's episode. But before we go into today's episode, I just want to share a few things with the BEB family. First and foremost, I want to welcome any first-time listeners to Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, the podcast, welcome to the BEB family. And please stick around until the end of today's show, and I'm going to share all my social media contact information, and please connect with me. Also, my new book is out, A New Black Wall Street, Circulating the Black Dollar Worldwide by Building Successful E-Commerce Businesses. Go to anewblackwallstreet.com. Pick yourself up a copy. It's fourteen ninety five. dollars for the hardback, I'm sorry, for the softback edition, and I have a new updated revised version, ebook version, which is $9.95, and it's good for Kindle and uh, any other reader. So go to anewblackwallstreet.com, pick yourself up a copy. The new revised ebook edition has a fast start guide and bonus chapters. So definitely, if that's what you really need to go, get the ebook version. Also, if you need additional assistance building a successful, sustainable e-commerce business, I've created an online course titled EducatedEcommerce.com. It actually is a compatible course to the book, and it takes you from point A to point Z to help you build a successful, sustainable e-commerce business. Now, you guys know Black Entrepreneur Blueprint is about you know, building an economic power base. And the way to do that is circulating dollars in our community. So I've created two platforms that will help facilitate circulating dollars in our community. The first one is BeSmartByBlack.com. BeSmartByBlack.com. That's a platform where black product producers can connect and sell with black consumers worldwide. And it's free to actually upload your information and your products. So go to BeSmartByBlack.com. Now, if you are a freelancer, say you do things on Fiverr.com or Freelancer.com, I've created a platform for you called HireBlackFreelancers.com, H-I-R-E, BlackFreelancers.com. It's free to put your information up there, and now you can connect with black consumers and black businesses that are looking to hire black freelancers. So instead of going to Fiverr.com or Freelancer.com, spend your money with a brother or sister that's a, that's a freelancer. So go to HireBlackFreelancers.com. And last but not least, if you guys want to bring me out to speak at a church, school, organization, uh, anywhere for my book talk, please just go to BookJJones.com, BookJayjones.com. Fill out a short form and I'll get right back to you. And before I forget, I will be in the D, Detroit, Michigan, coming September 14th. So I'll have more information as that comes about. But if you're anywhere near Detroit, I had to postpone it from last or actually from March uh, due to some illnesses in the family. But I'm coming to the day September 14th. So stay tuned and I'll be giving out more information. Now, let's get right to it, family. We got my man, Eric Thomas, E.T. on the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint Podcast. Hold tight. Here he comes. Hey family, I just want to let you know that during today's episode, we had a few sound glitches because we were recording on Zoom. And so a couple periods throughout the show, there's some glitches in there, but please bear with us because the content from E.T. is amazing. Family, I'm, I'm here with my brother, Mr. E.T. I don't know how many titles you got, Ph.D., author, uh, speaker, educator, pastor. E.T. is what it count. <laughs> what it count. <laughs> All right. My brother E.T., we appreciate you taking your time out of your busy schedule to come on with, with me and the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint family. I appreciate you, brother. And so for some of the few listeners who don't know who you are, 
give me a little background on ET, the person, and then we're going to break it down into your entrepreneurial journey. Yeah, man, I'm a, you know, a brother just struggling, you know, my way through, you know, learning as I go, you know. Um, I never saw myself here. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't eight and envision myself being here. You know, I wasn't, you know, 13, like, yo, I want to be an example. I want to, you know, let my life be. I, I wasn't on that, you know. I was a kid who mom got pregnant at 17, um, ended up getting kicked out when she had me because my grandma was like, look, I got way too many um, kids to feed, too many miles to feed. You know, my biological father wasn't in my life. Um, my mom ended up leaving Chicago, moving to Detroit, marrying when I was about five or six and i um, still young. So my mom pretend like the person that was raising me was my father. I confronted her when I was 12, 13, found out, you know, she lied to me about who my father was and just got rebellious, bro. I ended up running away from the crib from the age of 12 to 16. 16, I left for good. Ended up dropping out of high school, living in abandoned buildings, eating out of trash cans, just rebellious, you know, wow. kind of trying to find myself, end up, you know, on the streets of Detroit, hanging out with a crew that I didn't necessarily grow up with on that block. I ended up going to a different neighborhood, getting involved with some guys, you know, and just, man, just, we was all young, bro, making crazy decisions, trying to find our way through. Uh, at 17, 18, start going to church. My pastor convinced me to get my GED, go to college. Dated a young girl at the church who ended up going to college, followed her to college, ended up marrying her after my freshman year, kind of turning my life around a little bit. Uh, but then when my son was born, I went hyper, hy hyper speed, like, let's go. You got, you got a little shorty in this world that you got to be an example to. It's time to, it, it's time to turn it around, bro. So I, I'm still fighting with old <laughs> behaviors, you know what I'm saying, old mindsets. You know what I'm saying? Still, you know, while I'm doing good, I'm still, you know what I'm saying? I'm still dealing with that old man at times and uh, trying to make, you know, trying to make the moves, bro. I appreciate that, man. So one of the yeah. things that Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, um, as we were talking before we started to record, um, I appreciate your transparency because my, my, my family, the BEB family, as I call it, they know all my story. And so I, I appreciate you sharing your story with everybody. And so um, I want to take you to another place, man. Um, and I talked about this earlier when off the air, but we don't hear you talking about your business a lot. We know you're out there, brother, because I mean, I can't, I can't go on, on, on the net, man, without seeing you out there, brother. And, and I'm, I'm yeah. going to have to say this too, man. I can't listen to you before I go to sleep, man. Because, <laughs> because I'm telling you, man, I be amped up so much, I'm about to run through the wall. I'm like, yo, I got to cut E.T. off about yeah, No question. <laughs> I got to limit survival. Right? <laughs> exactly. But um, so with your background, um, how did you start speaking and inspiring people? How did that come about? Well, you know, when I was in college, uh, well, first, My transition, they started going to this church college and did a uh, week of prayer. And they allowed the kids from the church to take each one of us to take a day. And I remember taking like a Thursday. I wasn't sweet enough to do the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Um, you had to work your way I up. Spoke, bro. Like, yo, that was, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I had to work my way up to that. Right. Um, um, but when I started speaking, I remember practicing in the mirror, in the shower. And when I spoke for the first time, it was weird. It was like maybe Michael Jordan getting a basketball in his hand for the first time, or Jerry Rice with a football in his hand for the first time. Wow. It was like, yo, I like this. <laughs> you know, I can do this. Right. And I just felt so good about it. So then I get to college fast forward and not really doing well academically, but I'm a part of an organization on campus and we speak, you know, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, and we speaking in the middle of the campus trying to drop that you know, that um, that social consciousness on folks, you know, mm -hmm. and spirituality. And so I was speaking on campus and was loving it. Cats was feeling me like, yo, I hate going to chapel. I hate when they bring speakers in. But, bro, I like your, you know what I'm saying? Like, you keeping it, you 
And it's been keeping it real, keeping it real wasn't popular. Right, right. You know? And so I was doing it and feeling it. And I remember doing it and a guy brought me to his conference. My boy, Kenneth Anderson, brought me to uh, uh, what they call a retention conference that San Diego State University has sponsored. And okay. I went and spoke and he gave me a couple of dollars for it. And I was like, what's this about? And he was like, yo, you know, dudes get paid. You're getting paid too, huh? <laughs> you know, uh, motivation doing it. And that was the intro of knowing that I could speak, change lives, but I also make a living from it. And I started doing elementary schools. They give me 200, 250. I was like, yo. This is whatever. And I started studying motivational speaking, like books on it, and realized that some people have made it into a profession. Right. Yeah. See, one of the things on, on one of my shows, I talk about pinpointing and monetizing your genius. Yeah. And I call your genius the intersection between your passion and your talent. And so yeah. something that you're passionate about and something that you're good at, you're talented with, that's going to help you propel. And it's like you're in your genius right now, brother. You see yeah, what I'm saying? No, no question. <laughs> yeah, you're no in question. your cheese right now, man. Um, so let me ask you, in terms of your popularity, man, why do you think you're so popular? Why do you think people gravitate towards you like they do? Well, well I'll be honest with you, I think first is time. You know, okay. I kind of was like, you know, when you think of the Sugar Hill Gang, the hip hop to the hip, the hop, don't stop the rock. To the bang bang boogie, say, I'm jumping boogie. <laughs> they was the first ones really to, you know what I'm saying? Like introduce us to rap, you know. Right. Uh, and then you had basketball, it's my favorite sport. You know, I like to dribble up and down the court, you know. So I, I wasn't necessarily like, like, ooh, I want to rap, but these were the first dudes that was doing it. And so I was listening to them. Then Run DMC came out. I was like, whoa. So mm -hmm. I think I I was like the run DMC of this particular genre. You know, I right. got there first. You feel me? I got to YouTube before people was really doing this. I started putting out messages consistently. And so I think, one, I am not the establishment. I'm, okay. I'm not necessarily in a shirt and a tie. I'm not wearing a suit, if you will. I got a baseball cap. I'm like, I'm like your uncle. I'm like, I'm like <laughs> the dude on the block, you know, so you can relate. It's like, you know, I can relate to my man. Like his father wasn't in his life. He didn't do good in school. Whereas I think originally when you think about motivation, it was the seven principles to, and it right. was a lot of theory. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't necessarily, if you wasn't on that side of the track, you don't really know, you don't understand what they're talking about. So I think I took the motivational concept and made it practical. I made it relevant, you know? And then, bro, we all grew up, whether you want to go to church or not, in my era, it was that pastor that was an influence. It was that rousing voice, you know, the quiet, that that get your attention, you know, and then I bring that element to it. And I think for a lot of people, it's like, you know, when I hear them speaking, it's usually boring, it's usually dead, it's usually just, you know, so theory driven that, yo, he making it practical, he making it real, he making it fun. And I think I am a lot of dudes on the block. Let's just be real. People talk about basketball and football and boxing. You know, all those things mm -hmm. have been a part of our community, but so has the, the speaker. It's always right. been dudes on the block that could, you know, they had the gift to gab. It, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's, it's the part, the, the dozens, you know? Exactly. Um, yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what we do is speak. And I think mm -hmm. I just took what we did and then I made it into a profession. But you know where you're from on the block. Dudes could always run them out, whether it's, you know, arguing who's the best, Muhammad Ali or Tyson, whether it's who's the right. finest, Jane Kennedy, you know, or uh, 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 what's her that. name, uh, Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? We always been going right. back and forth, mama jokes. We always been using the mouthpiece. And I think I just used it in a profession where most dudes on the block, they just used it for entertainment. I, I took it, like you said, passion skill that's that intersection up. and i just made it into a career okay that that's what's up man because um um so you're being yourself you're being real yeah. and that's that's what it's about 
Uh, and, and like I said, you can't because you can't fake that, man. No. Now, did you have to? Did you have to hone your skill? I know every time you do it, you get better. But did you always have that charismatic uh, way about yourself, man? I, I think I was always. I think that's the gift. The the charisma is the gift. But I think when you're talking about making it into a profession, bro, between me and you, you know, you got to hone it to make it into a profession. So if you just right, use it right. on the block, you're good. But when somebody starts paying you 5G, 10G, 20G, 50G, like that, right. that's something different than charisma. That they, They're not looking for just charisma. They're looking for an outcome. And I think what I had to start right. doing, and again, just keeping it real, I was on birth, birthday, library, ambulance. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's, right. that's where I grew up. And so I had to go birth. T-H-D-A. Gotcha. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Math. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to go ambulance. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I had to understand that, like, when you're speaking to this audience, there's a vocabulary. When you're speaking to this audience, there's a way to deliver. When you're speaking to this audience, there's a way to get certain outcomes and to get people to move. And so that I had to study. The, the language right. I had to study the rules I had to study, the codes I had to study. Now, I can I can present, but I needed to know that information so I can present it in the way they wanted to receive it. So when you talk about a, a elementary school or high school, I ain't got to practice for that. Right. But now when you talk about training teachers or right. training, training school leaders, then yeah, I need to know the language. I need to know the format. I need to know how to put my slides together. I need to know how to do research, surveys. Like, that's something that I had to study. I think a lot of people are struggling financially because they want to live in the passion more than they want to live in the skill. And to your point, I think it's a unique balance. Definitely, definitely. Man, um, let me ask you, when you first started out speaking, did you um, finance this or did you just say, because a lot of times when people start businesses, they're like, man, I need X amount of dollars so I can do this, this, and this. Did you just go out there and just start doing it? Or did you really have a plan? No, no, I just started doing it. And here's what happened. It's mm -hmm. like playing chess. You know, I was very strategic on, okay, we're not going to be buying stuff that we can't afford. So mm -hmm. that, you know, because some people, the, the reason why you're spending money is because you want an office before you got enough business for office. Right. You know what I'm saying? You want the Cadillac before you really got somewhere to go. You ain't right. got nowhere to go, and you want the Cadillac. You want to wear the suit that the dude who's been doing it for five years, you want to wear that suit, you want that briefcase. I was like, yo, mm. E, don't buy nothing until your skill set can afford it or needs it. So don't, don't, don't buy no office space. Just use your living room. Don't buy no briefcase. Take that book bag you had in high school. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Don't buy no suit. Exactly. Get your khakis and a polo you can afford. And as I elevate it, like we just bought a building, believe it or not. This is my first oh, building, get out of my first office space. We was doing it out the garage, selling books out the garage. Wife wow. was the only one who could fit her car in. My car sitting <laughs> outside and all the books is surrounded. You know what I'm saying? And we got the postman coming to the crib, UPS coming mm -hmm. to the crib, picking up packages. You know what I'm saying? So my thing was like, yo, E, you don't spend no money, bruh. Don't spend no money. Right. You know, don't don't spend it until you have it. And so that would right. be my suggestion, you guys. Don't don't I blew up because my overhead was never high. I kept my there overhead low and I only spent what I had to and I let my career grow. And as my career grew, then that's when I start buying stuff. So, yeah, it's funny, man, because a lot of times people, you know, major companies, Fortune five hundred companies start from a thought. Yeah. And then they continue to grow over time. Yeah. So a, a lot of times, new entrepreneurs, they find it daunting that, man, how am I going to get to be E.T.? But E.T. didn't start out being E.T. E. <laughs> I was Eric Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so, you know, light bulbs going off to the B.E.B. family that, look, you got to start slow and build right. and continue to be consistent Whoa. and yeah. put that work in, yeah. you know. And that's, that's, that's one of the things, man. A lot of people be like, yo, Jay, how... How do you do your podcast? I said, for every Monday, 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, from September of 2014 until today, 
you got some new heat coming from Jay Jones. You can yeah. bank on it every Monday yep. morning, 5 a.m. Yep. Eastern. You yep. know what I'm saying? And it's consistency. Yep. Yep. That's it. Yep. Yeah. That's it. And Man. you know what, Joe? Here's yeah. the deal, though. We can't – you – there are those of you who are watching this, you want what you can't handle right now. You know, it's like the parent that buys the 16-year-old the souped-up Mustang 5.0 and little man end up getting into a crash on the freeway and die. It's too much juice, bro. You shouldn't right. get no 16-year-old, no five Mustang 5.0 that can mm. go 180 miles per hour when he got the brain of a 16-year-old, maybe the 10-year-old. Now, yeah. at 35, can he have a 5.0 with 100? But what is yeah, <laughs> because he's mature enough to know how to control it. And some of you want things you can't control right now. It would be to your demise. It would destroy you. So don't want more than you can handle. I promise you, in time, the maturation process, in time, if you mm -hmm. keep being consistent, like, bro, we didn't know each other before today. That's it. But he was consistent. I was consistent. <laughs> and that consistency brought us together. Most definitely. Definitely. Man, let me ask you, with, the, with your success, and as entrepreneurs, we all know that there's, there's not always high points. There's some low points, and sometimes there's things that just stun our growth. But can you give us a time with share a story where you had a major setback and how you overcame that? Yeah, so, man, so many major setbacks. <laughs> <laughs> and mm -hmm. every level is a setback, you know? So right. we just recently had a setback where we did the funnels, the click funnels, Mm -hmm. You know, and we selling books and numbers on the click funnel, and nobody checked to see how many books we had for the click funnel. Oh, you feel me? So <laughs> I'm right. this just happened for three, four months ago. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we got customers that's upset. I ain't get my stuff. You know, um, you, you know, just like you know, going through it. Like, e, you ain't professional. You, right. you preach one thing on your videos. You preach, I'm like, first of all, I don't preach books. <laughs> you know, so they don't got right. to do with me. That's a whole nother department, a whole nother division. I, I'm on my game, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but what we had to do was, you know, we, we had to not panic. You know, you can't panic. You know, you can't get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. You can't get anxious. You have to understand that we're having these problems because we're doing something. Folks who ain't doing nothing don't have these problems. Folks who sitting on right. the couch, watching TV, playing video games, they don't have the problems that a business person had. So first right. of all, you got to be grateful for that problem because mm -hmm. you couldn't have that problem if you weren't doing business in the first place. So you got to look at, one, you cannot panic. Two, you got to look at the good in it, right? That mm -hmm. they buy books and they right. buy so many that we don't have them. So let's go buy the books, right? Let's find out why we're so focus on the front end but not the back end and what I found when my staff took the test is I got a lot of introverts introverts not extroverts so I got a lot of people that start stuff but they don't have systems to finish it and follow through so I realized oh we got a problem we got right. ET and CJ and we we can start something we got energy and we bumped up but we don't have the kind of staff members that that check stuff you feel me we started but nobody got a cheat saying and so we had to deal with the problem we had. Mm -hmm. we, had to, we had to look at the positive, stay with the positive, fix the negative, and move forward. So whatever y'all do, don't get, don't get so overwhelmed. And I got to quit. I know you don't. Everybody that's been successful has dealt with um, some blind spots, some gaps, some challenges, some, mm -hmm. some mountains to climb. Everybody has. But Definitely. what we do is we don't get anxious. We slow down. We recalibrate. We see the good in it. We make the adjustments, and then we go back at it with the same vigor that we started. Because you don't want no scared money now. Scared money don't that, mean not, we don't want you ne nervous on the next move you make. I'm about <laughs> to mess up. Yeah, you might, but don't go into it with that mindset. You go into it with with with, with energy and courage, and be brave and attack that thing. Like let's go. And something else might mm -hmm. look. I've been married 29 years. I promise you, me and my That's wife we never had a full 365 where we ain't had a problem. It, right. it, it's the part of marriage. We're going to argue. It's going to be some stuff that's going to happen. We ain't going to have to be on the 65 perfect days. 
it's just right. not gonna happen. But right. I don't look at the couple bad days and go, why did I get married? Why did I do this? I'm mm -hmm. like, yo, it's two bad days. Let's wake up and try to have 30 good ones, 40 good ones. Then when we have another bad one, let's start off over again <laughs> and pretend like we never had a bad day. So don't right. allow a few challenges to make you want to quit and give up on business because you ain't gonna never have a, a year where everything is gonna go smooth in business. Right. It's just not gonna happen. Great, great point because I think sometimes expectation levels, if you yeah. understand, like people are like, man, in all of my businesses, they were like, you ever been sued? I'm like, yeah, I've been sued. Yeah. I said, you ain't been in business until you got sued. You, ain't been sued. That's right. <laughs> you know, That's it was, I mean, they lost the suit because it was frivolous. Yeah. It actually yeah. didn't even go to yeah. court, but I'm like, yeah. yeah, you know, that's par for the course. And so yeah. you got to understand what you're getting into. Yeah. Man, Um, your brand is so powerful, right? Now your brand is, is E.T. Everybody's like E.T., E.T. Now, do you have anything in place, man, that's going to, um, if say you get, God forbid, sick for a minute, yeah, yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. How, do you have anything in place that's going to keep that empire rolling, man? Yeah. Now, first of all, you guys got to understand, mm -hmm. if your business is personality driven on one dude, one young lady, it's mm -hmm. not a business. You're self-employed. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah, you that ain't know. no real business. You know, <laughs> right. A business is a business because it's not sustained by one person. Right? Chicago Bulls ain't been the same since Michael Jordan left. Why? Because everything was on MJ. Right? That's not a franchise. Right? A franchise is the Spurs. You lose Dave Robinson and you got you still win. Right? You got Tim Dunk. Right? You still got a winning program. Mm -hmm. Right? So for me, uh, we've got for speakers, we got something called our Game Changers, right? And that's the okay. speaker program we have. So we got guys who've gone through getting way sweeter, and you got people like Inky Johnson, who in a minute, E.T. can't come, Inky Johnson can come, right? We got people like Val for education. I can't come, Val going. You got Moose with the uh, certification. You got TJ. You got uh, Lil D, who's in the schools for me, you know? And so, absolutely. Then we got another division with my life coaches, that when I go to these colleges, universities, whatever, businesses, and I train people on the assessments, if I can't be there, my people can come, and you're going to get the same exact thing. Now, in the speaking, I ain't going to lie. You know what I'm saying? You might not necessarily <laughs> get, you know, the same exact thing, but something comparable. Then I got my son right now who is in training and doing his thing. My daughter, who on the assessment side is killing it, you know. Um, okay. So we're constantly building people up, and now we've got these entities you know then we got the solar company now now you got jamal coming in teaching people real estate and people are doing phenomenal mm -hmm. so more bringing in money just from teaching people how to flip houses how to buy property and get the money and then with josh josh is doing investment so we really do now finally have and it's been last year they started this year was the first piece of implementation and now we got ways to make money that don't rely on et speaking don't rely on me, you know, up front. The work we're doing in the schools is sustaining itself. You don't necessarily need me. Now, I'm an OG, so I'm still in the, you know, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm still in it, so don't <laughs> like think that they're just going to take my spot like that. But we do have infrastructures <laughs> in place where if, if not only if I get sick, but just period, when I want to go and chill out for, you know, uh, two or three weeks or during the holidays, I don't necessarily have to work for this machine you know, to keep doing what it's doing, which is why you're starting to see me on these platforms more because right. before I was so busy doing my thing, I didn't have time to connect with my brothers, you know, mm -hmm. and, and Bill. And right. So this is the second um, podcast I've done today with my brother. You know what I'm saying? And That's so now we're going to be able to build each other's community and we're going to be able to learn from each other. And I'm in a space where I can do more of that. Whereas before I was speaking so much that I didn't right. really have a chance to build, you know, like this. That's what's up, man. Yeah, because it's funny. Um, and you hit it right on the head, brother. You talking about if you a one man thing and something happened to you, you don't have a business, man. And and you're right. And that's what a lot of us fall into because we don't have that expertise yet, because we we're starting out, people don't know what's going on. And so with me having started over 17 businesses, and I'll be quite honest, like I do on the show, half of them were okay, some of them were complete garbage. 
But then there's some, <laughs> there was, you know, a few of them, you know, that, that I'm taking to the top. So right. but it's all right. part of the whole process. Yeah. So if yeah. you don't understand that process, you're going to be in trouble. Um, let me ask you, bro, do you, do you have a uh, an exit strategy for your business? Yeah, yeah. And that's the Nobel Peace Prize. That's what, that's you know, it. And that's after that, you're done. Yeah. And um, the exit is, you know, get me out of all the stuff that I'm doing and us as a company focusing on these schools because what I feel like if we can get our program in the schools and our kids understand the importance of education, like our ancestors understood the, the process of education because it is in educating ourselves that we get our true freedom, you know, and then economically we get our freedom. So I think it's a education economic combo that allows us to truly have our freedom. You understand what I'm saying? So my work going in the school That's what's up. Uh, and, and, and putting like, we've got assessment text for the kids to take. We've got online programs where they can sit there and watch. So that's what we're doing a lot of, man. Online, I'm even in the process, mm -hmm. man, believe it or not, of doing videos for my grandkids who don't exist. So that when I'm that's not physically up. able to be here, they're still able to get that message if that makes sense, you know? And right. so the, 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 the video, the, um, the video, the assessments, the curriculum is my way of coming out because you're going to be able to get the essence of what I believe in document form or video form or in audio form where I don't even have to be present. See, that, that, that's powerful, man. My wife is in education. She's a, yeah. a principal of a, a middle school, and now she just yeah. moved over to the high school. Okay. But reaching the kids when they're, you know, impressionable, and being able to show that there the are options out there. You know, we look at your story and, and you are uh, a perfect example of somebody that the light bulb went off. Yeah. And it was like, you know, I call that a point of enlightenment. Yeah. And when that light bulb went off, you didn't just sit there, you did something about it. Yeah. And so I hear some of these stories from my wife about, you know, the kids in the middle school and how, you know, it, some of their situations are terrible. And it just, people don't understand, it's hard for for a kid, if you hadn't had breakfast in the last three days, how are you going to sit still and, and learn something, uh, brother? So what you're doing and what you, you're trying to implement in the schools, man, um, big ups to you on that because we definitely that. need that, man. Uh, um, your whole message in general. Um, I'm not going to hold you too much longer, even though I would love to, but I know you're a busy man. Right, let, let, hey, give me we'll about have to do, yeah, let's not do this once, man. Let's try to, okay. you know, you say, you say eat once a month, once a quarter. Let's just try to keep building because I know your audience can use um, you know, some of the practical uh, information that I have and some of the stuff that you talk about that sometimes they need that third party endorsement where two or three are gathered. You know, the information right. is much stronger. So let's try to get a schedule where, okay. you know, where we chop it up regularly. Man, that, that would be a blessing, man. I have this, um, and I'll talk to you, all, you know, off, off the air, but um, I have this, uh, the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint Academy. I have all these online courses and stuff. Yeah. So maybe you can do a master class for us, yeah, man. No question. You see what I'm yeah, saying? No question. Something like that, um, where we have that yeah. that heightened content and uh, you'll be able to start, you know, serving because that's what you do. We all do. We're here to serve. You can start serving no and question. feeding these, you know, yeah. no people question. with all of this stuff, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah, no brother. Um, uh, so I got about three more questions for you, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. This this is this is something that probably nobody ever asked you, man. But tell us something about ET that people don't know, man. Are you a you a bowler? You a scratch golfer? Or? Oh, no, man, no, I wish I could. I do bowl, but uh -huh. uh, I don't. But what they probably don't know about me is my favorite thing in the whole wide world, man, is horseback riding. You know, oh, love, get out of here! Yeah, I love to ride horses, man. And one day I want to learn how to play the piano. You know, I okay. grew up in Motown, love music. And uh, but horseback ride, man, out in Texas on a beautiful 78 degree weather cloud, you know, no clouds in the sky, just a whole bunch of acres. And I'm just on that joke of me and the horse, <laughs> me talking to the horse, horse talking back to me. And we just out there doing our thing, man. So that's right. probably where a lot of people don't, when they look at me, they probably think, you know, right. urban, you know, Detroit, Chicago. But, right. Uh, ET love the horses, bro. That's what's up. Hey, we look, we broke it here first on Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. E.T. Yeah. loves the horses. E.T. Yeah. <laughs> e. ain't that hardcore. <laughs> um, uh, two more questions, man. Um, number one, what's the first or the number one piece of advice that you would give 
to current entrepreneurs and prospective entrepreneurs? Two things, man. If you could, if you could conceive it, man, you can achieve it. You know, mm -hmm. um, I just bought my first property out on the West Coast, bought my wife a beautiful home on the mountains, you know, in a community, you know, and um, she was afraid, like, yo, that's expensive, you know, but right. uh, if you can conceive it, man, I never forget. But she was diagnosed with MS, and I found out that the weather plays a major role on it. I said, I'm going to move my wife to the most beautiful weather in America. And it just up. happened to be in California. And, you know what I'm saying? It just happened to be in that Southern California, you know, region. And everybody right. talking about how expensive it is. Bro, it ain't nothing expensive when you set your mind on something. Whatever you can conceive, mm -hmm. I promise you, you can do it. Number two, like, yo, I would be very cautious of who I share my dreams with, you know, because the majority of the people, when I say I'm moving to California, you, um, you selling your house in Michigan? Right. No, I ain't selling my house right. in Michigan. That, my house paid for What would I sell that? that I'm going to get that to my kids, you know? Right. So be careful because people are like, man, it's going to be expensive. And what's going to happen if, and what's going to happen if, I'm always going to grind more. And then the exactly. last one is, whatever it is you need, you actually have it inside of you. That's like it. once your brain says, yo, wouldn't this be great? Your brain doesn't think of anything that your body does not have the potential to produce. It, it mm -hmm. would never like it, it would never think of something it couldn't do. Anytime you think of something, your body automatically has the skill set to make that thing happen. You feel me? And so right. dream, man, dream. And dream. it was funny when I was sitting down uh, with the banker today. My wife was like, you know, not being negative, but my wife was like, ooh, this is expensive. And she said, well, he's just going to have to work more. You know, <laughs> and I love that concept. That's so it. He's just going to have to work more. So it's not not possible. And what right. I explain to everybody is California must not be that expensive. People live there. That's it. A whole it's, bunch it, of them. It's people that <laughs> live there. The, the neighborhood I went to, one mm -hmm. of them was already sold out. And this this one was almost sold out. So somebody living there, why can't it be you? Exactly. Why can't it be you? Whatever dream right. that, why can't those dreams become reality? So just know, we've never taken out a loan. And I'm not saying, E, in our business, you don't need to take out a loan. That's not what I'm telling you. What I'm saying to right. you is we had a dream and we were able to make it happen without nobody's help. Me, CJ, Carl together. Lashana, we were able to grind. Then we brought other people on. And so up to this date, even with my church, we built a brand new church mm -hmm. with our offices upstairs. We don't owe nobody nothing. We didn't have to take out a loan for it. It was something that we decided we wanted to do. And we started doing businesses, like it was mentioned 17 businesses. We started coming up with other businesses, mm -hmm. real estate, solar company. And now those things sponsor the dreams that we have. So don't think for one minute, you don't have it. You have everything it takes to make everything you could dream of and you don't need nobody. And I don't know, I pull myself up by my own bootstraps. That's not what I'm talking about. I got C, I got Carl, but we didn't need Chase Bank. We didn't need Wells Fargo. We, we, didn't, we didn't need those things to get where we are. And you don't need nothing but you, your dreams, or whoever you're going to lock arms with to actually make your dreams become a reality. Man, that's what's up, brother. So it, it's being self-sufficient, basically yeah. what you're saying. <laughs> and that's what yeah. it's all about. Yeah. Like with, with, with the show, man, that's what we talk about, becoming self-sufficient, depending upon yourself. So you don't have to be beholden to anybody yeah. else. Doing your thing, yeah. serving your community, and doing what God put you here to that's do, it. brother. Yeah. Uh, now, I know you got the 1% Club, man. Yeah. Tell us about that, brother. Yeah, so, 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 so what the 1% really is, what you're doing right now, um, but we just spent two days doing it. It's like, yo, E, how'd you go from a working class family, you know, to dropping out of high school, all of that, becoming number one in the world, you know, in the speaking industry and a multimillionaire. And, that, and that's what we do. We just spend the two days just showing people how to do it. Because I, 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 I consider myself to be one of the Harriet Tubman's. Because mm -hmm. when you look at, you know, the Emancipation Proclamation Movement, it was a bunch of giants. It wasn't one person. Right. And so I am the Harriet Tubman, you know, in business, you know, and, and with gifts. I got my freedom. 
Right. I, I made it to the top. So now I'm coming back and showing people like, yo, I can show you how to do it. It's not as hard as you think it is. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm not telling you, you ain't got to put in work, but it's not what you think. I can show you how to be a multimillionaire. I can show you how to get in the industry. I can even give you a test, an assessment that we give that will show you what your gift is. So if you're right. like, yo, I don't even know what my gift is. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I promise you. Um, Mm -hmm. I can show you a 20 second, I mean, a 20 minute test and then a 30 minute me sitting down with your console. I can show you exactly like, nope, you shouldn't be doing this. Here's your lane. Now you got to pick in your lane, which thing you want to do and then take it to the next level. So it's two days. Of course, the first day uh, is more bringing in experts and they're giving you the examples. Okay. But day two, which is the VIP, is we pulling out that tool then you take the test, then going through some things with you to show you how to make that thing happen. So the 1% is all about, I'm tired of getting on, I'm tired of taking a private jet mm -hmm. and I'm tired of being in first class, I'm tired of staying in five star resorts, I'm tired of doing business with corporate. And when I look around, I don't see, I don't see me in right. the room. Gotcha. And, 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 I'm, and I'm not the dude that's in the room like, <laughs> I made it, y'all <laughs> ain't got nothing on me. You know what I'm saying? I'm right. the man, you could never get here. No, I'm the dude that's looking around like, whoa, if we play tennis, we become Venus and Serena. If that's we play it. tennis, we are Thea Gibson. If we play tennis, we're Arthur Ashe. If we play baseball, we Jackie Robbins. Mm -hmm. Jackie ain't, you looking at Jackie like he's sweet. It's a whole Negro. Exactly. Yep. He's the only one that can steal third bait and go home. You, mm -hmm. you, you just don't know. You, you just don't know Fast Shoes Willie. You know right. Fast Shoes Willie is playing for the Monarchs. You know exactly. He's playing for the Monarchs. So I, I don't want to get in the league and act like I'm the only Jack Robinson. I'm not. There are dozens right. of us. You just don't have access to the MLB because you're in the Negro League. I right. want to give you access. I want to give you access to the major leagues. And I want you to know, contrary to popular belief, the talent that you think, you, you, like you think you can't compete, if you come in here just like Jackie, you'll dominate. That's like what's you, up. You, you'll dominate in this space. This speaking space, there's some of y'all out there that will dominate, and you will eventually be better than, than even me. It's just I was one of the first ones to be able to get on YouTube and do right. it. But come come follow me. That's all the 1% Club is about. Man, brother, what, what, all right, I, I don't know if you know all the dates because I know you got a lot of dates coming up, man. So, um, well, I, I, uh -huh. I, I do know New York is this weekend, Friday, and okay. Saturday, right? Okay, um, I do know that um, New, New Orleans is coming up, Maryland is coming okay. up, Hawaii is coming up. And let me tell y'all something the only reason I was doing Hawaii is because mm -hmm. a part of being a one percenter is also not just information, it's environment. Exactly. And, and you got to come, not Hawaii, but you got to get to a place where like Dubai, Hawaii, Australia, the Gold Coast, like you got to see that. Because right. your brain is designed in such a way that once you see that, like you ain't never trying to go back. It's a like wrap. once you see it, <laughs> you ain't never trying to, you know, not. So this is the easiest way to do it. ETinspires.com. Simple. ETinspires.com. You can go there. The events are there or et number one percent.com and that'll okay. show you the events as well but i'm just trying to tell you i don't know how long i'm gonna be alive you know mm -hmm. i don't i don't know i don't i don't i don't make those rules but That's while it. i am alive i'm giving away the secrets like i'm i'm not playing no games i'm literally showing you step by step how me cj and carl did it and then after that mm -hmm. you just got to make up in your mind you're going like we talking about starting the podcast in 2014. You're going to be consistent. You take our plan and just be consistent with us. I promise you, you six figures easily, seven figures with just a little more, um, a little bit more muscle, as my grandma used to call it, elbow grease. Elbow you know grease, saying? yeah. That just means you're grinding. <laughs> Put that work in, baby. So you can get to the seven figures. Man. My brother, and um, so etinspires.com, and and I know that's the that's the site I always go on. I know yeah. you have everything on there, everything. Yeah. yeah. And uh, brother, uh, I'm gonna hit you with one more, man. All right, one more question. <laughs> I got you. 
If you had a chance to have a conversation with one person, living or dead, who would it be and why? Martin Luther King. You know, okay. Martin Luther King, I want to know like, how do you get a group of people who have a slave mentality? You know, Harriet Tubman. How'd you get those people who were so afraid of change to change? How'd you get those people who knew they had to risk their life for their freedom? You got them to walk across the bridge when they knew they'd get their head busted with clubs. They knew mm -hmm. they'd stick the dogs on them. They knew they could possibly get lynched, car burned up, left for dead. How did you get a group of people to go all in for something? How'd you do that? You know, because that's what I want to do. I've that's seen the promised land. Like I've, I've, I've tasted success, but I want to get the dude on the block who think all he could do is sell dope. I want to get the person right. all they think they could do is work for 10, $12 an hour and believe they can make, they can pay, they can start paying people $24 an hour. You know, right. so I want to talk to Mark. I want to talk to, Harriet, and, and just ask, mm -hmm. how did you get a group of people to change their way of thinking? And how did you get them to invest in themselves come hell to high water? My man, that's a great answer. Brother, I want to uh, thank you once again for taking time out, man, of your busy schedule. Uh, we definitely got to stay connected, man. Matter of fact, yeah. um, while after I stop this recording, man, just hold tight. I just want to yeah, okay. chat yeah. with you real quick. But I appreciate yeah. you, brother. BEB family, my man ET, etinspires.com. Support the brother. You know what we do here, Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Everybody we have on, we show love for and we show support for. This brother's out here doing tremendous things for the worldwide community, and we need to be behind him and support him. So, ET, brother, I appreciate you, man. Uh, you just hold tight for a minute, man, and uh, me and you'll wrap. That was a powerful interview with my man, Eric Thomas. Mr. E.T. So make sure, guys, that you support E.T. and everything that he's doing. Go to etinspires.com. You can check out everything E.T. is doing right there. Man, there's so many takeaways, but I just want to touch on a few. Um, E.T. was talking about consistency. And when I mentioned to him, like, E.T. wasn't E.T. when E.T. started. <laughs> okay? It's because he had that consistency. He continued to hone his craft. He understood what markets he was in. And he had to adapt and continue to grow and build. So when you look at somebody like E.T., and if you're looking to become a speaker, public speaker, motivational speaker, inspirational speaker, or whatever, you can't look at E.T. and say, man, how am I ever going to get to that point? Because you always have to start from a foundation and from a base. And after that, you'll continue to move up the ladder. So you have to have patience. But with that patience, you're going to have to have consistency. So don't rush it, guys. You got to put the work in each and every day. And if you listen to any of E.T.'s videos, you know that he talks about getting up three in the morning, outworking people and really putting it in and honing your craft so you can become that one percent. Also, with that one percent, uh, don't forget to check that out. E.T. Inspires dot com. And you can see the one percent right there. So it's coming to cities near you. So make sure you check that out if that's something that you're interested in doing. Now, before we close on out, family, um, and I say this each and every week, but thank you guys for the following. Thank you for the support. Each and every week, we get more and more downloads, and I attribute that all to the BEB family, which is you. So please continue to spread the word about the podcast, the blog. Uh, also, this is on video. So even though we have the audio version on YouTube and on all the podcast platforms, if you want to watch this interview, we actually have this interview live on video. Now, um, before we get out of here, uh, I just want to say if you need to connect with me, anything long, hit me at jjones at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com, jjones at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. That's J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. Facebook, if you want to connect, please, you know, link up with me on Facebook. Just type in Black Entrepreneur Blueprint and like the page. Twitter, jjones001, J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S-001. Instagram, jjones for real. That's the number four, J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S, the number four, R-E-A-L. YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just for example, 
this is going to be up on YouTube in video format in addition to the uh, regular audio podcast. So just go to Bluetooth, type in Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, and hit the subscribe button. Uh, LinkedIn, just go to LinkedIn, look for Jay Jones, Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, connect with me there. Uh, text message, if you want to be included in the BEB text line for special events and notifications, text BEB, like Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, to 555-888, BEB to 555-888. And if you need me to come out to speak at a university, a college, a church, um, high school, elementary school, uh, for, or for my book tour, just go to bookjjones.com, B-O-O-K, jjones.com. Fill out a short form and I'll get right back to you. Uh, I speak on many different topics and I'd be more than happy to come on out. I'm heading out to Detroit in the uh, middle of September and uh, so I'll be out that way. Now, everything that I just talked about, if you're watching this on YouTube, just go down below and I'll have all the links to everything we talked about, ET site and everything like that. So um, with that, family, I love you guys, and I'm going to see you the same time next week. Make sure you spread the word about the BEB podcast and also the blog. Love you guys. See you later. Peace.